next question is question number 18. And the question asks us to solve the quadratic inequality x squared minus 5x plus 6 greater than or equal to 0. To solve a quadratic inequality problem, you have to go through a series of steps. Though it's much like a quadratic equation, it's a little bit different. And the steps I refer to are that one, you have to factorize the quadratic equation to find the factors or critical values. Then based, then, based on the critical values or factors you get in one, you now draw a graph. And from the graph, you will now be able to determine the interval on the graph that satisfies the quadratic inequality. So, by that, I mean this. So, let us start by writing out the quadratic equation that we have to solve, which is x squared minus 5x plus 6 is greater than or equal to zero. So the first step we have is to factorize is to factorize and to factorize the above you multiply x squared by six to get six x squared and you ask yourself what factors of six x squared that when added together will give you minus 5. So to start off with, let us write first one, x squared. The factors of 6x squared, when added together, that will give you minus 5, is minus 2 and minus 3x. So you have minus 3x minus 2x plus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. So if you take, so put parentheses around them, bring x out, the common factor, so you have x into x minus 3, then the common factor is 2, bring to r, that will be x minus 3, greater than or equal to 0. So grouping the factors together, you have x minus 2, x minus 3, greater than or equal to 0. Now, at this point, a lot of students tend to make a lot of mistakes or a common mistake where they now um, just equate this to zero and say something like either x minus 2 is greater than or equal to zero and then they now solve x is greater than or equal to two and then x minus three is greater than or equal to zero and the mass of x is greater than or equal to 3. This is wrong. It's a common mistake that a lot of students make. Please, don't make this mistake. If you have a quadratic equation, yes, you can do this. But this is a quadratic inequality problem. And solving it like this does not satisfy the quadratic inequality. So that is what makes us undergo the second step in our process which is to draw the critical values on a graph to get critical values we equate the factors to zero so that will be x minus 2 is equal to zero or x minus 3 is equal to zero so x is equal to 2 or x is equal to 3. This is not our answer. This is our critical values. And based on these critical values, we will now draw our graph which we talked about in step 2. So we draw factors of critical values on a graph. So let's clear the screen. and draw our graph. So we have so this would be y axis 
and this will be our x axis. And the two critical points and the, the factors we have is x minus 2 and x minus 3. Now, the critical critical values we are able to derive is 2 and 3. You don't need to write all the numbers in between. That's why we call them the critical values, the numbers we just need. And now, to draw our graph, we look at our original quadratic inequality. x squared plus times 6 is 6x six squared. That is a positive x squared graph. So that would mean that our graph is going to be U-shaped. If it was a negative x squared graph, so for instance, we had minus x squared here, and here was plus 6, I'll multiply it to get minus 6x squared. It means that our graph will be N-shaped because it is negative. But since in this instance, our graph is positive, it means our graph is going to be U-shaped, crossing the x-axis at points 2 and point 3. So that's why so when we draw it, we could go something like this. So this is a point 3. Now going to the last step in our process, which is step 3, we now determine the interval on the graph that satisfies the inequality. So at what point in this graph is this inequality greater than or equal to 0? So it's greater than or equal to 0 from here upwards, uh, from here upwards. So we can just safely put an arrow this way and put an arrow this way. So it satisfies the inequality at the point where x is less than or equal to 2 because here is 2, is so anything less than or equal to 2 and at the point where x is greater than or equal to 3. Anything here is greater than or equal to 3. So that's where it satisfies the, um, our inequality. Now going back to the earlier common mistake that I say a lot of students make that I refer to. Um, if you notice then we say we had x minus 2, x minus 3, greater than or equal to 0. So a lot of students will just say x is greater than or equal to 2, x is greater than or equal to 3. Now, if you look at this, def definitely does not match this. So this, even though matches this, it, the, both of them combined, make sure that that whole process is wrong. So students, when you're in the example, don't solve the problem like this. It looks very simple and it's kind of very stupid really when a common mistake like this is what's going to make you miss the answer. So now that you now know, if we look at amongst our options given, we will see that our answer is um, x is less than or equal to 2, x is greater than or equal to 3, which will make our answer A. Oh, welcome back. Did you enjoy this video as much as I did? Well, I hope so. And did you actually remember to share the video before you started? Well, in case if you did it, it's not too late, you can still do it. If you are watching this video on Facebook, please hit your share button so that other people can see it and enjoy it. And also, hit the like button. It costs you nothing. And if you are watching it on YouTube, Please hit my subscribe button so that when I upload new videos, you'll be regularly updated. Thank you.